Welcome to the Magma Classroom, our weekly digital painting study session in partnership with Wacom. This particular classroom series focuses on the basics of digital painting, starting with the fundamentals of value, shapes, light and color. We've done a good few apples and spheres already in previous lessons, tried our hands at some more interesting still life studies, broken down simple landscapes, and even run a gauntlet of timed exercises to speed up the learning process. These one hour study sessions are aimed at beginners finding their feet with digital painting, illustrators who want to tackle new subjects to grow their visual library, and more experienced painters wanting to warm up or wind down with something different from their usual work. I'm your host Ryan, the resident artist at Magma, and together we'll be sharpening our skills each week with a new subject to study. Top up your mug and grab your drawing tablet. While you wait, be sure to subscribe if you're not already so that you can stay updated about future sessions. We'll be getting started shortly. everybody welcome 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 to the classroom another week another week in our world of dragons themed set of uh, live streams we've been doing all kinds of interesting things uh, <laughs> yeah we've got a few people here already uh, for those tuning in on youtube if you want to join along this is going to be a one hour study session you're welcome to spend longer than that uh it's no pressure it doesn't matter if you're a beginner experienced it's all good but we're going to spend a little time together trying to tackle this bit of reference over here. Hard TBT, we've got Andy here, Mountain Pirate, Burning Phoenix. Uh, is, who is that? I know this thing. Ah, it's Spling. And who else? Critter. Cool. So we've got a nice gang here already. You should all have access. If you've been here for a little while already, you came in early, just refresh your page. You'll have access to the... Uh, to the players brushes so you can use that if you want to not something you really need, to, need for this i think but nice to have a little textured sketchy brush I think. what did i do with my drawing ah, it's really hot yet makes drawing without it pretty difficult Funny how i'm able to lose things so efficiently anyway so if you're watching along on youtube you want to join in check the stream description i have the wrong banner up we're doing portraits not environments let's change that there we go yeah so you'll have to join the magma art space first the magma classroom art space and uh, from there you can follow a link to the canvas and you can grab any of these down here we've got we've still got a few open i can duplicate make sure there's enough if you're joining on Twitch, let me know. I'll have to, I'll have to drop the links in the in the stream chat. Um, but yeah, but yeah, let's get this music down a little bit, a little bit loud, a little bit loud in my ears. And okay, so if you're a beginner, it doesn't matter. I'll take you through a little bit of, bit of my process. Portraits aren't exactly my strong suit, but the way we're going to look at this is not necessarily in getting. Uh, trying to be like perfectly anatomical, anatomically correct. We're not looking at the structure of the face necessarily. We're going to be working with shapes. Uh, we're going to build this up based on shapes of, of value. That's why we're keeping a grayscale. Uh, this photo comes from a sample pack done by Graphit Studio. Uh, they have an ArtStation marketplace page where they provide all kinds of um, 
of reference packs, which are really valuable. And you can use that for, for practice and figuring out poses for your characters, that kind of thing. And every now and then they release a sample pack, a free sample pack. And this is an image from there, a scribe or potentially a wizard. Who knows? Uh, it could well be. Gosh darn, what? I really need to find my drawing glove. Um, hmm. Hmm. It's not here. It's not here. So do check them out if you're looking, if you're looking for some reference material. They've, they've got tons. They've got tons of packs there. This is so weird. <laughs> well, I'm going to improvise with something on my drawing tablet here. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll chat a little bit through my process, but I'm also, this is, I might go quiet for a little while, figuring this one out myself. Uh, we're just here to spend the time and learn a bit together. TBT, I can't draw people, but we'll chill for a while. No, that's fine. Take a crack at it. There's no harm in, no harm in trying. Uh, let's get my layer up there. Cool. Now I can, so just to show a little, a little bit. Uh, what I'm looking at here when I say I'm we're gonna be looking at shapes. If I zoom in a bit here. Zoom. So in the face we have some really nice uh really nice distinct dark shapes here. Sort of uh what's that? sort of eyebrow, typical eyebrow like shape. But this in here that goes into a bit of dark along the sides. Of course, we've got, if we zoom out, uh, the full canvas just disappears whenever I join now. I don't know how to fix it. That's strange. It's visible for me now when I come in. Um, in terms of admin settings, how the admin settings here, everything's fine. So you're still not able to see it? Maybe it's a bit of a bandwidth issue. It's weird, like the thumbnail doesn't, doesn't show up down below in the sequence, but on canvas, it seems to look fine. I can see you've added a couple of little specs there. Hmm. Otherwise, can you see the the layer in the? Can you see the contents of the layer in your layers panel on the right? Because maybe what you could do is push Control A to select the entire to take that layer. Oh, really? Okay. It's so weird. Um, hmm. Trying to think how we could do this in a way where I need to take a screenshot and bring it up, bring it up into your own canvas um, from your art desk, and just keep the the stream and everything separate. That could be that could be one approach. Strange things that technology does. Uh, okay, I'm trying to draw on a layer that's hidden. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Oh yeah, so uh, just to break things down a little bit, of course we've got a very like sort of dark background that fades from dark to slightly lighter, and then everything. This head that's that's here we've got a nice sort of almost egg shape if we factor in the the hairstyle there. It's almost like a bit of an egg. Uh, just breaking down simple shapes first, and then this all fits within. Not quite a triangle, but almost. Yeah, it's not quite a right. And then you have these very strong lines which come down, cut through that. So, but this is the this is the overall kind of thing you want to fit with. Put that head on top, and then just adding in those those dark shapes, squinting your eyes, uh, just to. Just to not get caught up in the detail of the specifics of the face. You could even temporarily, if you duplicate this layer uh, and go to your filters, add a blur to it. Just so you like just that you don't get caught up in, in the details to start. 
and so that effectively you're doing the same thing as squinting your eyes you're getting rid of that detail and you can kind of see these big shapes of dark and light and this sort of triangle almost under here and then there's a patch of something there and then once you get deeper into it then you can start refining and bring things back back into focus so i'll hide that and then we can get we can get started so the first thing i want to do as always is make this nice and big yeah a higher that's good one mountain pirates adding a high amount of contrast definitely definitely makes a difference that's what i did for this reference image as well it was it was in color and uh, i also just bumped up the i bumped up the contrast a little bit on it first um before we got started with the session as well just to just to strengthen all that make the shapes a little simpler because we're working in black and black and white you know we're not getting we're not getting caught up in stuff here it's just a study or focus on the shapes so we simplify so the high contrast at least separates the the light and dark there uh, so i'm going to go set up a bit of a dark background here start oh, that's way too brown cute and yeah just keeping keeping grayscale again and we don't have a lot of time and i don't want to focus on on details that you could really spend an absurd amount of time on so that's so i want to keep it in keep it in black and white let's go a little lighter here just creating like a little bit of a a blended background could go a bit even a bit more even than that but it's not it's not that important just want to have a slight gradation a little bit lighter over here maybe lighter than the background even a little bit just a little bit I'm color picking a lot and I have a lower density and, and opacity for this gradation. Okay, let's not get much more than that. And on a separate layer, I'll, I'll start playing with things. And now I'm not going to, I'm gonna try not to sketch things out first. I'm actually just gonna create uh, these big shapes first so it's out it starts it around here a little bit higher of course we've got all these all the white and everything else coming in there too which we'll get to this could probably be a little sharper at that angle. And we've got quite a light. Mountain Pirate saying his shortcut for, for the background was to draw on an oval and then blur it into oblivion. And then on the next layer, add in a bit of texture. Interesting approach. I like it. And that's where to go actually with just doing um doing a blur to smooth things out. So we've got this chin here. This comes across into this. I'm just starting with a sort of grey midtone here, but obviously these are much lighter. Yeah, obviously I want to add in the details. I just find that it's it's easy for us to to get caught up in those details too soon. Well, at least that's the case uh, for me. I know, I know it tends to happen to me. Like over render the eye and then find out that overall things just don't sit 
properly on the, on the head. Yeah, like this is quite light. Break this shape down. Getting a lot of light. And here, this may be a bit too much. Yeah, I do it. I do it all the time as well. Caught up way too soon. And the shapes here. Let's make it a bit grayer. I'm just looking at it as masses of value, right? I'm not looking at it as, okay, that's the head, that's the forehead. All that. It's just, just very general masses of, of value. So even when I, if I come here to the hand, um, I'm just looking at it, squinting my eyes quite a bit, just trying to see it as a, some sort of shape or, um, it's obviously got volume. There's a shadow in there, which I'll get to. And there's also enemies coming down here. So this book probably extends a little further. This actually comes out more. Maybe we had 15 minutes on. Cool. Oh uh, yeah, working with a thin flat brush to do it. Definitely, definitely a nice way to do things. Amazing what such like such a simple a simple brush can do with that sort of shape. I mean, this could even be further over actually. And uh, those thin flat brushes are also really cool for landscapes. I'll find, I'll find. It's mm. a little bit much. Yes. Black in here. Okay, and then. I suppose here's where we are going to. Obviously, this is too dark. Let's, let's make the mass overall a little bit lighter. The blob that is the head. Oh, this is little wispy bits as well. And we've got a feather, a dark shape here. And of course, we have these dark shapes here. The contrast is really intense. So I'm going to drop the value of the face again a bit more. But really quite a it's got such an awesome face shape um, okay so I'm gonna start off a little bit lighter than black with this just to see if I can get the shape yeah I'll try and line things up a little bit This 
it's all very dark. Now I'm losing a bit with the background. I need to be a little, a little bit lighter. If you're just looking at these edges, the face is darker on that side than the background. So we're just going to create a little bit of that distinction. We're doing it so it's zoomed out. Mm. That's also kind of the point. Don't want to be too zoomed in too early either. It's definitely some light on this side. Yeah. Yeah, this is a bit lighter. Let's put a light on the edge of the book. More of these pages. Knuckles. <sighs> so I haven't got this angle right. This should be going anywhere. Let's just fill in that whole area to start. So on Wednesday for the clubhouse, the theme is monks and mages, which is part of why we're doing doing this in the clubhouse today. I mean, in the classroom today. It's a little bit of a bit of practice towards that. Get this mouth in. And also, this chin is way more interesting than what I've got here. Shapes are getting there. It's 
it's definitely one area uh, also, well, not one of many areas that we'll need to spend some time on getting getting better about portraits but I'm sure that's everybody I'm sure everybody getting that feels that way about portraits you can always do a little better Brush but bigger. I'm working with way too small of a brush. This part of the book could be bigger. And we also have this hand underneath. Grab finger running down into the dark there. Finger that runs there. There. Who was that one actor that played with, uh, not played with, played in um, what is it called? It's Oriental Express? Movie. But like, also such sharp Features uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I don't think it was Murder on the Orient Express. The Darjeeling Limited, of course. That was it. Adrian Brody. I think he's got also such an interesting. He's got quite like a long nose, distinct brown, kind of like a small mouth. This guy kind of reminds me of him. I think it's the shape of the nose. Even though this guy turns in a little bit more, I think. I still haven't done the mouth. Why am I avoiding the mouth so much? Let's just get this jaw in first. 
strong angle. I think that's it. Yeah, see when I should be doing the mouth, something that defines things more, I'm adding buttons. Make his cheeks a little plumper. It's a bit too thin. This should come over a bit more. Oh. Drinking so much water. Anything to not add the line for the mouth. I don't have an avoidance tendency. Color here, which means to make that stand out, I have to just lighten up a little bit of this area. There's Splinglish is is watching, but I see your comment there on the Discord server just with your challenge about the not seeing the contents of the canvas. It's weird. I assume you've given the. Oh, it does work in Firefox. Strange. So I know sometimes after using my PC for a little while and doing heavy loads on the graphic, uh, I don't know, that banner was, totally didn't notice that banner. Um, giving heavy loads to the graphics card, sometimes I just I get a message saying, oh, graphics information lost. I can't view the, the canvas for, for a moment. But then a simple refresh does the job. When it comes to the clubhouse, how are you guys getting notified about it? Are you following like the disc Discord notification? Or do you see the banner pop up on your on your canvases that we're starting a new session? Or you just got a you got your own alarm set? 
I ain't missing this. Ah, the YouTube, of course, sends notifications too. The YouTube. Nice, okay. Didn't know about it nice and early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mountain Pride is just showing up early, so sometimes you miss the notifications. It's a place from here, I can start. Going into some detail. Where are we at? 36 minutes. Uh, I could probably. Splingish. Spling is back. Are you going to be trying on Firefox now? Uh, just watching. Okay, cool. Let's get this one here. Uh, got a bit of box shape in here. Double sort of line. I'm always just trying to look at this stuff as. There's a shape there, there's a line there, not, oh, I can't draw this hand, or I can't draw this, there's a finger, I don't know, I don't understand the shape of that finger. I think that's the way to think about it. All just shapes and lines. Often quite inaccurate shapes and lines that I draw. and spend some time on that face, render it out a little bit more rather than run the hand and various other details. It's not as important to me for this. So let's, uh, the tricky part is, it is, I need my reference a little closer, so I'm going to duplicate it again, shift T, go to transform, and bring it over a little, a little bit. Actually, I don't even want that whole section. I want a selection rather just this area here and nice little thing quick thing that one can do save 
control C and control V, I mean, I suppose that's pretty quick too. But you can also assign a hotkey for something like layer via copy. And it creates a new layer with your selection. Drag the layer over. Well, now let's try and be a little better about things. So let's define the shape more. Oh, deselect, don't forget to deselect after you make a select. I don't need it. Ugh. Mountain Pirate asking, how is Baldur's Gate going? It is so refreshing <laughs> to, to play a game like this. It's so good. Uh, I'm finding it really difficult to, to keep away from it. The story is a lot of fun, different interactions. Combat, of course, is very, very D and D like, and like classic Baldur's Baldur's Gates. If you've played the previous games, which were those done by again? Bioware, I think, did them. Um, yeah, it's just so satisfying. Larian did an awesome job. Raised the bar. Of, of video games, I would say. And what I'm what I'm finding interesting is that I see obviously now my YouTube feed is getting filled with uh, videos. People say, you know, people doing videos about optimum builds and things I wish I knew before I started started playing and all that kind of stuff. And I see little glimpses of, or they're using screenshots and whatever. And it looks like different kinds of events and obviously different kinds of characters. And I realize that there is just so much to this game. And I'm going to play through it. And I'm not going to have scratched the surface. Well, I mean, I would have gone through the storyline. But there is still so much dialogue, so many other encounters that would play out differently based on your characters and your choices, who you align with. And yeah, I'm going to be playing this for a long time, I feel. Good. Andy's saying also really, really digging it. And uh, I, I watched a video earlier by uh, I forget the name. It's a chap at IGN responding to how some some developers are are reacting to the success. Um, but one of the things he pointed out that he found refreshing was just the fact that there are no microtransactions that you have to you're almost being bullied into buying. Uh, there's none of that at all. You bought the game, you've got the game, you enjoy the game. And it's the gameplay is good. It's not they're not trying to make you play so that you buy stuff, skins and items and whatever else. They've got you playing because it's just a damn good game. Yeah, I agree. I'm not. I'm not a fan of that either. Antirium, oh, I still need to. I got the the DLC stuff because I wanted the art book um, there's an art book that comes with 
with the game. And I haven't gone through it yet because I've just been so distracted by the game itself. But I can't wait to actually go and take a look at that. Okay, so I think, what have I done here? This is maybe a bit too low. Let's, let's move it up a little bit. Fun part, I've just started getting back into starting an aquarium, so my YouTube feed has been, <laughs> has been nuked. Oh, but what cool, what cool content you have also appearing on your, on your feed though. If it's all about aquariums, I think that's great. Titan's Quest 2 was shown on the THQ. THQ question. I haven't I haven't checked that out. Let's change this track. Titan's Quest 2. And you know what, this is, um, this is one of the first games that I'm allowing myself to get sucked into. Uh, but in general, I've kept the specs of my, my laptop below, below what can, what the requirements of some of these hardcore games uh, require, because it's all just so dangerous for me. But now, after my recent need to upgrade, it just so happens I have adequate specs for exactly the game that I, <laughs> that I want. I think when I, when I started out at art school and I was buying the components for my, for my laptop, I knew it for my my tower i knew i was going to be um you know doing graphic work going in, in with the intent of going into design but i was like no 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 it mustn't be like it mustn't be a gaming machine because i'm gonna lose too much time i don't, I don't think it was particularly successful for me because i'm still such a sucker for like diablo 2 still I, I can still lose many many hours to that it's like old games it's still they still do it for me I've been listening to soundtracks from from games I used to play during my my teenage years a lot lately. So today it was Unreal Tournament soundtrack. Brought back brought back some good memories, got me all fired up. And I came across an official Diablo Lo-Fi uh, playlist. So on the on the Blizzard channel. Or was it the Diablo channel or the Blizzard channel? I think it might have been the Diablo channel. Uh, and it's like music to stay a while and listen to, or music to slay world bosses to, and that kind of thing. Some of the classic Diablo background music. There was a Quake 2 update. What? Don't tease me. Yeah, I'll look at Titan's Quest. I've got, I've just opened a tab with it here so I can take a look. Oh, from Bethesda. Oh, goodness. And Doom. 
Ah! No, no, that's confused. That's confused. Yeah, we've got these hard shapes in the face. If we just want to smooth out some of these edges, just drop the opacity and the density, make sure it's set to pressure. And just lightly, just lightly go over those areas, just to soften the transition a little bit. I've been quite intrigued by what Riot's doing with Project L. Super exciting, actually. To have a, a co-op competitive uh, fighter game. Where you have, if you haven't seen it yet, think, uh, think of Street Fighter, but instead of sort of 1v1, you can partner up with a friend next to you and battle friends on the other side. And there's these combos, which I think they have that in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Crit over here. Got that. And there have been, I think, there has been a game with that before, I think. Or similar, where you could kind of tag, tag in and out, or you could at least select a sort of partner hero can't quite remember so i think this face needs to come out a bit more Time check. Aha, uh -huh. thanks for the reminder. We are seven minutes out. Which means I should have saved another sip of water. So you know it's it's on its way to something I can I can see when I zoom out a bit. There's some inaccuracies in the face, but that's fine. Use the side by side to paint, yeah. Yeah, for something like this, sometimes it's easier to just. Um, I sh you, that's exactly the problem, problem Spling. Busted. Busted. I, I have not been flipping my canvas. Let's take a little. Kind of wish I hadn't now. <laughs> so, yeah. This, Try and make a habit of this. I have not been, I have not done so. But flipping your canvas is, is a very, very valuable process. Whew. Yeah. I think there's curve in the nose. Up. Thank you for that reminder. Actually, I appreciate that. Definitely need to be better about it. The hotkey, for those that don't know, is H, so you can easily flip your canvas. <laughs> Makes it look like they're dancing if you flip it frequently, repeatedly. Yeah, that's definitely a practice I need to hammer in. So even 
this. Okay, the jaw is a little wider. Ugh, this mouth is gonna seriously bug me. Okay, okay. And yeah, just that that freshening of the of the image. Oh jeez. Make it does make such a difference. It makes an annoying degree of difference in that I really should be doing this more frequently. I probably wouldn't be suffering as much as as I have been. Cheers, TBT. Thanks for joining. Always good to have you here. As it is with you all. Got another portrait lined up for, for Thursday. We'll be doing a we'll be doing a woman instead this time around. Today we had a nice wispy haired man. Now we'll have a BS BS lass with a glowing orb for Thursday's one. Also from a Graphit Studio sample pack. So if you're looking for, for reference material, they're a good source. They have their page on ArtStation. I don't know if they have elsewhere. Actually, I've been meaning to check if one can purchase their reference packs somewhere else, maybe like on Gumroad or something. I haven't looked at this. But really awesome reference. They've got some nice like, packs that are just 360 degree turnarounds have a model standing on a platform just turns and you get full 360 degrees different angles from different four different poses Yeah, well, as long as we're we're challenging challenging ourselves here in the in the classroom, myself included, that's all good. Going on with this. I think it's because I've just made the jaw weird. My tiny darn brush. No, I don't need it that big. It's a little rounder here at the chin. It comes out. mouth good loud good loud working chunks of blur i should actually take a little look see see how everyone's work is going Ooh, i really like this andy nice exaggerated face 
the length of that nose and uh, the chin area, really cool. Dig it, dig it. Tell you your mind's pride. Yep, adding in that blur. Got the eye, the orbs for the eyes in there. So do you 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 painting in painting in chunks, add in a blur filter on a separate layer. Well, you're painting the chunks on a separate layer, blur them, and then draw on top instead of having to use a soft brush to blend things. Interesting. Interesting. Well, <laughs> this is awesome, Critter. What an excellent job. Nice one, Burning Phoenix, as well. Nice full opaque strokes. Shape of the book looking good. Got the sharp, the sharp, strong no nose. And that bend in the nose, like you've got that, got that down. Who is over here? Yet only for Leo. Made a start and then dashed off, I assume. Yeah, TBT going making an attempt there. Can't do faces, so stop there. One of my worst pieces. Don't worry about being bad at drawing people. That's not to be fair. El Camaleon was here as well briefly. Didn't see you come in. Ah, there we go. Added an extra canvas at the end. Nice, no, making a solid start. So, yeah, we're done with the stream, but you are welcome to, to keep going. It was a fun attempt for, for the hour. Yeah, I'm really slow too, Burning Phoenix. Um, <laughs> Would really like to to paint much faster. Andy said, "Much better at reptiles." Oh, I can start adding in some some scales to this guy. <laughs> uh, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Definitely help you on another piece. Cool. Yeah, maybe that's uh, interesting. You say that um, I'm busy working on a on a video that covers a little bit about this using uh, using studies to. Kind of working backwards from the, your ideas or paintings that you start busy working on or an idea you want to start and then setting up a number of studies for yourself to get yourself better equipped to to tackle that so maybe what we can do is um if there's particularly things that you w would like to study i've got to start prepping for next month's streams and i'm looking for for topics and suggestions so feel free to to drop those on on discord or think about it you can let me know at the next session uh, and we can we see if there's something you're busy working on that you want to practice with the rest of us and get us to suffer with you in in getting getting familiar with the subject then then let me know that'd be really cool so that's all for now thank you very much guys great to great to hang out if you are free on wednesday it'd be, it'd be nice to see you in the in the clubhouse Hair, and he's suggesting hair. Good one. Okay, definitely add that to the list. Here is my rollout thing here. Here. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Chat again soon. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.